Their presence is like a miracle. Today, the Komodo dragon is the world's largest known reptile in existence. They are endemic to Indonesia and cannot be found anywhere else in the world. There are around 2,000 Komodo dragons distributed in some of the Indonesian islands. Most of them live in human-managed wildlife reserves. A small portion of dragons live in a natural environment. Their development can cause a lot of trouble and even become a danger. Therefore, Indonesian farmers have to make efforts in order to deal with the threat of Komodo dragons. Komodo dragons are carnivores and opportunistic hunters. They mainly scavenge. However, if they are hungry, they will attack any prey they come across. Komodo dragons will also eat smaller prey such as insects and rodents. Komodo dragons would dominate all known lizards. Their massive bodies can weigh up to 330 pounds. They are also known for their tough skin, which protects them from predators and allows them to live in harsh environments. They are an apex predator in their natural environment, holding the highest position in the food chain. Komodo dragons can easily take down large animals from water buffalo to deer and even humans. Komodo dragons are capable of laying more than 30 eggs per clutch, and even more notably, they are capable of parthenogenesis. That means they can reproduce without hunting. This is a special feature and is the reason they are able to quickly invade the habitats of other animals. The Komodo dragon's large body and long tail makes it look like a prehistoric monster lost in the modern world. Its tongue continuously sticks out like a poisonous snake stalking its prey. Perhaps one of the Komodo dragon's most distinguishing features is its tongue, which is forked like a snake's. This allows them to detect odor particles in the air and locate prey from a distance. Their keen sense of smell is essential for their survival in the wild. With skillful camouflage, the Komodo dragon patiently waits for the perfect opportunity and then suddenly attacks using its sharp claws and tears its prey apart. Its powerful jaws crush the bones and flesh of its prey instantly, leaving the victim unable to react. As soon as the prey is bitten, its teeth will inject a poison and it will go into every fiber of the prey's flesh. The adult can die from the Komodo dragon's venom if not treated promptly. Even if you are lucky enough to escape the Komodo dragon's initial attack, you still may not survive. The Komodo dragon's venom does not cause the prey to die instantly, but rather it causes them to become paralyzed and die three to four days later. Usually the Komodo dragons hunt in groups when attacking larger prey. Venom is not the Komodo dragon's only weapon. Its mouth is filled with harmful bacteria. When it bites, these bacteria immediately enter the wound, leading to a severe infection, causing the prey to quickly die. Populations of Komodo dragons quietly lurk in their natural habitat. When natural food sources become scarce, they will often attack livestock, causing an economic loss that can be in the millions of dollars each year to the agricultural sector. The situation is truly alarming, and it can get even scarier when the Komodo dragon begins to invade the island's human living areas. Therefore, the Indonesian government needs to implement policies in order to address these dangers. This farmer has come up with a simple yet effective trap to catch Komodo dragons. However, these homemade traps cannot catch a large number. Not only do they attack other animals, Komodo dragons are also known to attack their own kind. When food becomes scarce, competition for resources is inevitable. Within each group of Komodo dragons, there is a clear hierarchy, and these confrontations are how they establish and ensure stability in their community. 
Hunting organizations determine the bite force and analyze the danger level of the dragons. At the same time, they provide safe hunting methods for hunters. The use of rifles is determined to be the most effective means of hunting. Hunters usually organize into groups of four to six people. The group size ensures full coverage of the terrain and maximizes safety. This is because Komodo dragons are known for their aggressive attacks. They can also move gently and hide skillfully, making them difficult to detect. Experienced hunters will aim accurately at the head and defeat them with a single shot. The goal is to kill the dragon quickly and humanely to minimize the dragon's suffering. Every year, hunters in Indonesia often organize Komodo dragon hunts from September to November after the breeding season ends. Hunters focus on finding dragon tracks and are alerted to the potential dangers. Local farmers can determine which areas Komodo dragons frequent. The hunters carefully observe the dragon from a safe distance, alert to its movements and behavior. The best way to have a successful hunt is to identify a safe shooting location. After defeating it, the hunter conducts a thorough examination to ensure the dragon poses no further threat. On average, a successful hunt will yield one or two dragons. Hunters must report detailed information, including the number, size, and exact location of the hunt. These successful hunts have brought significant benefits to the local community. The risk of dragons attacking humans and livestock has been significantly reduced, improving the security of the local villages. In addition to legal hunting, dragon populations also face illegal hunting. This can lead to an uncontrolled decline of the number of Komodo dragons. They also face a number of threats such as natural disasters and climate change. Some human activities such as agriculture and logging also reduce the space available for this particular species. They have become an endangered reptile. In Indonesia, Komodo dragons are considered a first-class protected animal. Conservation efforts are being made to protect the Komodo dragon and their habitat. This includes the establishment of protected areas and captive breeding programs. In addition, Komodo dragons also contribute to the local economy with recreational activities and ecotourism that generates income for the whole community. Is controlling invasive animals in the US possible? When faced with millions of large animals threatening crops and livestock, hunters and farmers are forced to hunt in order to maintain agricultural security. This is a tense battle for survival. The peaceful scene suddenly becomes extremely bustling and tense. The buffaloes jump out of the water, preparing to escape. Crocodiles are stealthy hunters. They hide for hours underwater without creating a ripple and attack their prey quickly. When attacked by a crocodile, the prey has almost no chance of escaping. This is because crocodiles have one of the strongest bite forces in the animal world, five times stronger than that of a lion. The aggressive predator is present throughout the United States. Alligator populations affect other wildlife species and farmers' livestock operations. Each year, American farmers must prevent attacks from around 10,000 alligators. Florida's alligator hunting season typically begins in September and lasts through to November. It is very difficult to approach alligators within reasonable shooting range. Hunters can only hide from afar. This is because they are very sharp and aggressive creatures. In reality, farmers cannot kill crocodiles quickly and keenly. And if humans are detected, 
the creatures may run away or return to attack. The first shot at the creatures must be very careful and it must control it. This is because if they retreat into the water, the spoils of war will certainly be lost. For the shot to be effective, the hunter must aim for the brain or a shot to the spine just behind the head. Alligators are best hunted from cover and shot in a prone position. The tougher skin and extremely hard bones that cover its brain require a large caliber rifle. They use only quality controlled expanding soft tip bullets. Large caliber rifles should be avoided as the recoil from such a weapon when fired in a prone position can be terrible. Therefore, determining the correct shot position is an important factor. Hippos like to sunbathe on the shore and nearby are a few crocodiles in the river. In fact, if given the chance, the crocodile will attack and eat the hippo immediately. This is an easy scene to see. The two species have a symbiotic relationship and often live in the same area. The group of hunters wants to catch the giant crocodile and they must track and find areas where the hippos live. Taking down this large species is quite easy, but the carcass must be picked up before it sinks. Then they will tie the hippo's body in the area where the crocodiles often go. Crocodiles by nature are bloodthirsty apex predators and using the enemy's corpse, they can be lured to a more favorable shooting position. The hunter chooses a suitable approach point and waits until the crocodile arrives. Prey can distract the crocodile, making hunting more convenient. Hunters will have enough time to observe and shoot at the key points to take down the crocodile. In ideal conditions, hunters must observe the terrain and choose a suitable hiding spot. Using a hunting rifle from a distance of at least 30 to 50 meters is the optimal choice. This ensures an effective and safe hunt of a crocodile. Hunting activities are rather strenuous. When the farmer discovered the crocodile was over three meters long, he had to struggle with it for seven hours. States including South Carolina, Georgia and Texas all have alligator hunting seasons that typically begin in late August or early September and last for a few weeks to a month or longer. The state's alligator harvest is typically established by quotas. Besides these reptiles, US states also face the invasion of wild boars. The preferred habitat of the wild boar is the grassy steppe and dense forests, especially in the agricultural areas where they are abundant in food sources. Wild boars are highly adaptable, thriving wherever there is water and tree cover. Therefore, they are considered a harmful invasive species, pushing native species out of their habitat and destroying agricultural farms. Every year, in the United States, wild boars spread, causing around $2.5 billion in damage. One of the biggest challenges in hunting is accuracy. You must be a good shooter. The hunters often hide behind trees and run very fast to catch up. The hunter must grasp the direction of the wild boar's movement in order to adjust the gun appropriately. While fleeing, wild boars may suddenly accelerate or change direction. They can even attack hunters. Therefore, hunters must have quick reflexes to respond to all situations. Just shooting bullets at wild boar bodies is not necessarily enough to defeat them. The standard place to quickly kill wild boars is their head. Imagine a wild boar is a target that can run and your mission is to hit the bull's eye. This is a challenge for hunters, even the best shooters. Once the target is set, the hunter shoots quickly and decisively. They must ensure that the speed of pulling the trigger is faster than the running speed of the wild boar. 
When there is a scope mounted on a rifle, the hunter cannot see all of the area around him, so they often use an observation device. This is especially needed at night, as then it's nearly impossible to see anything in the dark. Hunters need powerful equipment to be able to clearly see the wild boars from a distance. Hunters have the opportunity to shoot accurately and safely. Additionally, a flashlight with a red filter is a great aid. Based on the vehicle's speed, farmers always keep wild boars within sight. Every shot must be very fast and accurate. Before deciding to hunt, farmers can use fly cams to observe the overall situation of the farm or track down the location of the wild boar. After locating their prey, they enter the hunting area. This way helps the hunt to go more smoothly. At the same time, it increases their chance of success. This group of hunters is distributed throughout the forest, waiting for the right moment to take down the wild boar. Besides using weapons, hunters also need the support of hunting dogs. Agile dogs can keep up with the speed of the wild boar and even kill them. In the bushy terrain, out of sight, farmers need hunting dogs to help them catch the wild boars. If considering fighting ability and physical strength, hunting dogs are no match for the wild boars. But a group of hunting dogs can easily find them, especially during the night when human vision is limited. The sharp senses of the hunting dogs help them to find the wild boars in the dark. In addition to feral pigs, coyotes are also a constant threat to agricultural areas in the United States. Winter will be when most coyotes run out of food and livestock farms are the ideal destination. For Louisiana farmers, coyotes are troublesome bullies who can cause a lot of damage. This also poses a big challenge to the livelihoods of American farmers. Louisiana authorities have legalized hunting for invasive animals. So if coyotes are found stalking on the farm regularly, some farmers choose to control them using guns. Hunting activities will take place around areas frequented by coyotes, such as grasslands, forest edges, or near farms. As summer approaches, Minnesota hunters begin their hunting activities. Freshly cut hay fields have a larger food supply, so hunting in open fields and farms is ideal. Coyotes are also very territorial, so using vocalizations to challenge their dominance is essential. Professional hunters will use radios to assist the hunt. They will emit a sound that simulates howling in order to attract coyotes. Coyotes are so agile and they are deceptively small targets under all that fur. Farmers must ensure they have their principles straight when hunting. They don't rush to shoot when the coyote is moving, but don't hesitate to pull the trigger when they stop. Hold your line of sight and pull that trigger. Appropriate camouflage clothing and equipment will help the hunter blend into the surroundings, increasing the chance of remaining undetected. The increase in coyote populations has also created a series of problems related to agricultural practices. At the same time, it also threatens social security and complicates the management of government and federal agencies.